as part of his agreement with USCCA as the representing lawyer, really with the insurance company as the lawyer who is representing Mrs. Giles and getting paid by them, he has to send them the discovery. And this is part of the cooperation clause that we've discussed in some of our previous videos. So as part of that cooperation, he sends the discovery over to the insurance company. Well, what happens? The insurance company gets back to him and says, we've determined this is not a self-defense case. She acted criminally. She committed a crime here. Therefore, no more coverage. You're on your own. USCCA drops its insurance on a paying client, but were they justified? Welcome to another installment of the Connecticut Gun Bench. Today's video is brought to you by PAN Farms, LLC, PAN Farms for NRA Certification and Multifaceted Gun Training. You can reach us at 203-300-6343 or use our website at www.panfarmsllc.com. As always, there'll be a link in the description box below. And if you like my channel, like my content, what I do here, you can support me with the link. Everything is appreciated. Let's talk about this. Now, I came across this entire story through another YouTube website. This is a, a YouTube page called Attorneys on Retainer. What these guys are, are attorneys, obviously, but they provide insurance if you're ever involved in a shooting they will provide you with legal you know legal representation pretty much what uscca does with their i guess you could call it self-defense insurance now this is my opinion these guys if you watch the whole 22 minutes which i did these guys take quite a bit of time bashing basically subliminally bashing uscca for dropping her policy and quite honestly, they got a couple of things wrong in their assessment of her case. But just real quick before I come over to here, because I'm going to start giving you the details of this case. Once again, this is not a condemnation of USCCA. It's not a promotion of USCCA. It's nothing against these two attorneys or for these two attorneys. It's about this story. As the trial unfolded, the evidence started coming out. And when I started reading into it, I'm saying to myself, wait a minute, there's a lot more going on here. She claimed self-defense in the shooting of her husband or estranged husband. As more and more evidence started coming forward, it started to paint a different picture. I wanna come into here. This is uh, from a local affiliate, KALB, and Kayla Giles trial, state and defense rest, Giles does not take the stand. Now. I want to come down to this. This is the, the testimony or summary of the testimony of the forensic examiner who examined Giles, who is the person on trial here, examined her MacBook laptop. Now, I want to come here. Gunter was able to analyze Giles' MacBook Pro in the flower bag, the laptop Giles' sister took to Ochita Parish to give to Giles' friends, Jennifer Dennis. It took Gunter several years to properly extract its contents due to Apple's changing encryption software. That delay in pulling data off the laptop is what delayed the trial from starting last May when it was originally scheduled. The state presented the jury some of the data that was discovered on the laptop, and this is where it gets a little damning. They showed a Word document with a court document that appeared to be waiting to be filed entitled Defendants Notice to Relocate with Child, which means she wanted to take her child, and this is Texas, she wanted to go back or two taxes with her child that she had with her estranged husband. That VOC document was created September 4th, 2018, four days before the shooting. Gunter also extracted contact info saved in an address book for USCCA. This is in the parent company through the insurance that she bought for self-defense. The insurance company for which Giles bought self-defense policy for the gun she used to kill Thomas Cote Jr. That contact information was entered on the date of purchase of the weapon. 12 days before the shooting and then accessed again on September 1st, 2018, seven days before the shooting. Gunter also found a copy of Louisiana RS-14, which is the criminal law code within the document where section 1920, which pertain to use of force and justifiable homicide. Gunter said that information was accessed four days before the shooting and recovered by him 
as an item possibly saved, then deleted or accessed and not saved. Then the same forensic examiner managed to dig up some iMessages that were on her laptop between Giles, Kayla Giles, and someone in a 214 area code. The conversation that was read began with Giles writing, I deleted all social media. This is before the shooting. The 214 area code said, yeah, I saw that. It sucks you have to do that. Then Giles said, I may make the news. Reply, make sure to send me the link. Then Giles, you may be the one starting the GoFundMe for some bail money. Okay. Now, I want to come also down to here. And now the, you can read this yourself. I will try to get it back in, into the link into the description box because there's a lot in here. But I just want to go through key things that made me question the self-defense claim by this person. But this is, once again, it's forensic evidence. The prosecution submitted evidence that Safari search history extracted from Giles' phone. All searches identified in court were recovered, deleted searches. So she searched, then deleted the search by here. Here's a look at those searches. August 24th, 2018, Giles searched Louisiana self-defense spouse and Louisiana self-defense laws. August 26th, she searched arrested after self-defense and self-defense inside car. August 27th, she searched Dallas Ruger 380. September 4th, relocation and restraining order. These are things that she actively did a Google search for, for information. So I'm gonna come out of that. So that's the information that I started picking up on. And I said to myself, well, wait a minute, because if you heard those uh, two attorneys from the attorney on retainer, they said that part of having this insurance is you, your attorney has to submit a discovery to the insurance company. And during that discovery, the insurance company deemed that her actions were criminal and dropped her policy. Now she did sue. She sued a federal case against the two sister companies of USCCA, which actually provided a policy and a judge basically threw that out. She was convicted of second degree murder. But here's the thing, and this is what it all boils down to. Was USCCA justified, knowing what you know now, were they justified in dropping her policy with the information? Because during the discovery, obviously the insurance company is gonna get the same information that the defense attorney is gonna get that the prosecution also gets. So based on that, the insurance company said, eh, there's something criminal about her behavior and dropped her policy. Were they justified? That's a tough call, because she, you can always go, it can literally split this down the middle. She paid for the policy, they should stand by it. She, alleged, potentially, allegedly, did a criminal act, and they shouldn't be liable to cover her, or cover her legal expenses, due to the fact that they believe it was a criminal act. So, that is a very interesting, that's why I found this very interesting. Should UC, USCCA be held liable for dropping her from their policy, knowing that she bought the policy days prior to the shooting, knowing everything that you know, were they justified? That's the question. I could go either way with this one, for sure, but let me know what you think. As always, you can leave your comments in the comment section below. And as always, any statements of violence or statements that lead to violence will be removed. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to hit, hit that notification bell so you're notified the next time a video goes live. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.